no credit, and you're trying to get a house to flip. Uh-huh. How did you get that first house? When did you get that first house? Like, how did that? How did that work? Because people, okay, watch. Because people are listening to the show. Yeah. Right, they they have no clue, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I have no clue. Like mm-hmm. I don't know how to get that that first house. I don't yeah. know how to go about that whole process. And you've done it before. Now you've done it three or four times, five mm-hmm. times. So you you understand. So how did that work? How easy was it? How hard was it? Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Good All Show, where we learn how to grow motivate you to grind and encourage you to give i am james good all your host today i am joined by one of my friends joe woosley and it is christmas we just got done with christmas today is new year's eve a lot of big games today i think we got cincinnati and alabama i think we have um michigan and um help me out joe michigan and man i'm not sure brother Michigan and Al- no, Michigan and Georgia. Michigan and Georgia today. So when I upload this tomorrow, Super we'll sell. know we'll know who who won those won those two games. But we went to St. Louis for Christmas. Hope you guys had a good Christmas. We went to uh, um, St. Louis, where my wife's grandma's from, and then Joe's wife's grandma's from. We're brother-in-laws. Um, my son was sick the whole time. Baby James was sick the whole time. Had a fever and and. It was not fun. I mean, it was fun, but yeah, he just good. wasn't himself. So um, I'm getting ready to move, moving into a new apartment, bigger apartment, because the apartment we have now is just way too small. Two bedrooms with two kids, and this one's going to be like three bedrooms, but the one of the bedrooms is going to be a lot bigger. Kitchen's going to be bigger, have a, a dining room and a, and a bigger living room. So we're excited. Joe's going to get the book of the week in it here in a little bit after we have the conversation. But Joe, I've known Joe... I mean, for a long time, right? I mean, I remember the first time that I recall I was in eighth grade. You, I don't know what grade you were in. If I was in eighth grade, I was watching the the tournament we have at, at our school, right? We're at the tournament. I'm mm-hmm. at the eighth grade. I'm watching Todd Mooney play senior year. Yeah. And I remember being under the basket. Like, I mean, you might have been five, four, yeah, four, I, five. I don't even know. If, I'll probably in K4, K5 yeah. at the time. I mean, it was, it, I was watching it. I mean, I was... You were either sitting next to me or you're sitting on my lap and we were watching, you know, HB lose in the championship game to uh, some team. I can't remember exactly what happened. I know what happened, but I can't remember the team. Mm. So, and then really, I mean, I coached you in, in my fresh, your freshman year and then JV, sophomore yeah. year you went to varsity. Mm-hmm. So we've gotten to know each other and obviously working together a little bit helped me out last year, man. We, we, we shoveled some snow. Oh, yeah. That was yeah, terrible. That, that, that was a night to remember for sure. It lasted forever. <laughs> Dude, Got I don't think you'll ever help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a group effort. A lot of guys out there grinding, but that was, yeah, that was that was heavy snow too. That I don't even it. know if you'll ever help me again. Dude. That was. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't want to shovel snow ever again because we had because the problem was it snowed a lot. Yeah, it snowed a lot, but then also two plows broke down. Yeah, one one plow the transmission just went out halfway through the night, and then you know so was that at the beginning of that big subdivision, dude? It. Well, we had ch- we had plowed it once, and then we had to plow it again, and then yeah. it went out. Stink, yeah. And, you know, that was just a terrible <laughs> night. I remember getting there after shoveling, you know, 15, 20 yards with me and my little brother, and get, getting there, like, we're like a few a few houses in, in this huge subdivision, and then seeing you stop the truck and mess with it, and my heart just sank, like, that did not, that did not just break down. That's gonna, It's going to be a long yeah. few hours, that's the case. Okay. We, I, I think we might have been a little closer, maybe, like, to the middle or closer to finishing, but I remember being like, man, that... That was a big deal, and that, that I was just a long saw night. people's faces, all the guys' faces, because a lot of guys are helping us. We're in high school, yeah, you know. Yeah. They're like, "Hey, we're getting this. We're gonna get this subdivision done, and then we're gonna be done." And mm-hmm. I know in my mind, in my mind, I'm like, "No, we got like 40 yards after yeah. this, 40 drivers after this," and, and you know, because we had a second second group coming in. Yeah. we were gonna leave, and they had you had a yeah. new fresh guys coming in. Yeah, dude, it was the worst. So, and yeah, we you, worked. How together. long were you out there for? I was dude, not we there. Out I, was there. I mean, we were out there. Were. I don't think we were out there 24 hours straight. I think we were out there for like 20, and then we took a break for like eight hours, and then it snowed again. And Yeah, because I was out there for, good, I, don't know, I think, a, t- a good 10 hours straight, and I was done. <laughs> it was cold, dude. And I remember your brother's face, man, because he was in seventh grade. I mean, Jeff's a big kid. Yeah, big kid for yeah, eighth grade. But yeah. seventh grade, I mean, you know, you're just done. I mean, and he was using a shovel. <laughs> Yeah, I was happy. <laughs> and like, his feet were probably freezing. Oh, dude, yeah. that was the worst. So we worked together, and then now we're, bro- we're brother in laws. Yeah. Um, his wife and my wife are sisters. So, um, you were, uh, you were 
the usher at my wedding. So we've yep. known each other for a long time, you know, and as a 21, 21, 21 years old, yep. 21 years old. And the reason why I called this show the Good All's, the Good All Show is not because I didn't want to call it the Good All's Long Care, Good All Long Care Show because it wasn't, I didn't want it to be, all, when people look at it and be like, it's just about long care. Like I want it to be about different businesses mm -hmm. and how to grow different business, different avenues and you know, where someone who's in lawn care now might be like kind of frustrated, like I want to get into real estate. So you've been in real estate now, you know, I've known, you know, at least, at least for three years, maybe your first house you got like three years ago, four years ago now. But I, I, the questions I have for you first is how did you get to this point, right? You're 21, you've done maybe three or four flips, maybe five flips. I'm not sure. We mm -hmm. haven't had this conversation yet, but you've had five flips. Where did it start? What motivated you to get to real estate? Why are you in real estate and where are you at now? Yeah, I think I think if you're going to ask me what why why real estate, it was kind of just kind of the next step for me, you know, to be honest, I coming out of high school, um my dad had done, you know, a lot of housework growing um when he when he was in college, when he was newly married, when he was a few years um, into his marriage, he did some some flips and had some background. He he hasn't done it for about ten years now. Uh, my brother um, had had some some rentals. Uh, so coming out of high school was in the back of my head, you know, that I might want to do real estate. I wasn't set in stone, but that I might want to do um, just just that type of work, real estate investment stuff like that. Uh, so coming out of high school, I, I was debating it whether to get whether to get into my first house or you know to get that you know, nine to five job or reg a regular job, whether, um, just that consistent job with, you know, el elsewhere. <clears throat> um, but I guess the reason why I got into this was because, um, first of all, people that could help me, you know, whether it was family, whether it was men, um, that I knew that could help me grow. Um, but also I was comfortable, um, just kind of, to be honest, kind of that, that, um, you know, side side of me or, or I'm a competitor. I have to compete just to just to get in there and make something happen. You know, I was comfortable betting on myself instead of instead of taking that consistent job from where I'm working for somebody or I'm at a place all the time, which isn't a bad thing. But like I said, I just for me, I'm more of I got I, I kind of like to you know kind of figure out my options first and kind of expand a little bit, just my personality wise. Um, but that I'll just, just come out of high school, just you know what I want to. Um, kind of bet on myself, get my own job, you know, have my own hours, I'm my own boss. You know, that probably to start off, that wasn't very smart because I wasn't a good boss for myself necessarily. I, I made a ton, a ton of just dumb decisions, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, but I was just, I wanted to bet on myself and I wanted to have fun doing it and learn, learn a lot doing it. I thought that was my best opportunity. So that's why to begin with, that's why I chose to, to dump into real estate. Yeah, so, okay, so you're at that point, I mean, you're right out of high school, 18. Yeah. Right, 18 years old. You got your, your first house. I remember, I know I know how John got his first house. So how did you get that first house, right? You you went to the bank or, I mean, you didn't have much credit at that time. Right? I had no had, credit, yeah. yeah. No credit. And you're trying to get a house to flip. Uh -huh. How did you get that first house? When did you get that first house? Like, how did that how did that work? Because people, okay, watch. Because people that are listening to the show. Yeah. Right, they they have no clue, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I have no clue. Like mm -hmm. I don't know how to get that that first house. I don't yeah. know how to go about that whole process. And you've done it before. Now you've done it three or four times, five mm -hmm. times. So you you understand. So how did that work? How easy was it? How hard was it? <laughs> that first house, I found on Craigslist. Okay, nothing special about Craigslist. Anybody can find a house on Craigslist. First of all, but I found a house on me and my dad. Uh, my dad helped me. My dad practically walked me through that first one. To be honest with you, out of high school. Me, me, my dad had talked a few months before graduation and getting into it about, you know, he he never wanted to force anything, you know, on me that I didn't want to do. He made sure that it was a decision I wanted to make. And we talked about it. And I ended up kind of including myself that, you know, I want to do real estate. So I jumped in and me and him looked for a house for, for you know, a few months, you know, looked at a few in, a few in the area, uh, a good month and a half to look, just looking for, driving around, looking for houses, looking on certain sites. But we found it on Craigslist. So we found it um, there. And that first one, as far as financially, I, like you said, I had no credit and I didn't save up, you know, 20 grand <laughs> out of high school. Um, that, that first one, my, my dad, um, he had saved us some money. He let me start out with his money. Um, 
and even even today, you know, a few years into it, my credit still isn't that good. And I still use not my dad's money, but investors' money that, that I've grown a relationship with and I have that I have a reputation with. Uh, whether it's men that I know, uh, work with, or investors that I just just by word of mouth they've we've gotten together and talked about a few things and now I use their like they're an investor and I use their money. Um for the most part, some of my own is in it now. But that first one my dad, my dad helped me out a ton. You know, he, he, he helped me find the house. We found the house together. He let me use some of his money to get that house. And do you want to go in detail about that first house at all? Because that, yeah, that first house. I, I remember I, I, if, if the first house is what I'm talking about. Is that, that's the hoarder, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. The hoarder? Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, we, could, we, could talk, we don't have to go into detail about a specific house or whatever. But I do remember, for back up, what, what you said there was, you hear the statement all the time, at least I heard all the time growing up, like it's not about what you know, it's about who you know, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and building, yeah, that, building that relationship. So people, well, first of all, you got to grind. Yeah. You have to like be a hard worker. So people would, like if people's, someone's going to give you 15 grand mm-hmm. to invest in a house and another person's going to give you 15 grand, like you have to be trustworthy. Like yeah. you, They have to look at you like, I'm, I trust this guy. Mm-hmm. I, I, I believe in what he's doing. So you have to build that relationship, but then also build your work ethic and get to know people. And, and having a you know a father right that that, yeah. that helped you out too is huge. Yeah. I mean, because some people don't have that advantage, but no. then some people do, mm-hmm. and they they want to do their own thing. Yeah, you know. So, but you know that that that's the that's the one thing you said. But then I remember that. I mean, you could tell the story about this first house you got, but I just remember you remember telling me. I mean, yeah, that hoarder. That first house. I mean, you hear you you see the show is hoarder, the hoarder, the hoarder shows and whatnot. And I had too, you know. Honestly, I thought, to be honest with you, like I thought, man, that just, you know, it's for it's for TV, it's for it's for it's for show, it's for you know, just to make another another buck, another another TV show. But I got that house really. I got a dirt cheap, man. I got a dirt cheap because of the condition it was in. What'd you What'd you get it for? I got it for ten thousand, which I could have got it for like three like three thousand because the city was gonna kick kick this person out because of how bad it was it was ruining the neighborhood and this this person that lived in there. She was just a psycho. <laughs> she was in the whole. I mean, she, she would call the cops on her neighbors consistently. I remember talking to the neighbors of how just multiple times, just for random stuff like parking here, parking there. She would call the cops. She would just, she was just out there, man. It was crazy. And so we got this first house, dirt cheap. You know, as an eighteen-year-old, I mean, I got this house for for ten grand. I'm like, that was that's dirt cheap, and it, it needed, dude. It needed work. It needed work. But, but ten grand, like to me. In a good, it was it wasn't a terrible neighborhood. No, you know, but ten grand, like when I was like, when I was in high school, I'm like, dude, you can't buy a house for ten thousand dollars. Yeah, and then you're saying, dude, I could get this for four. <laughs> After I bought the house for ten, I talked to some of the neighbors, and they knew that she was going to get kicked out by the city. It was the house was on the demolition list. That's that's how bad it, it was going to be torn down and just get get rid of. That's that's what the plan for the house was. And the, and the city gave her a certain amount of time to get kicked out. And I, as an 18 year old, you know, I didn't do much research. I should have done more, to be honest with you. 10,000 is still super cheap, but I could have got it for three, 4,000. You know, the, the person that was selling the house for, you know, wholesaler and was, you know, got her, you know, a few more thousand than, than she, you know, she, she could have. But I mean, 10, I, we, we talked them down from, you know, 17, 20,000 to 10,000. I thought, like, oh, awesome. You know, which was, is, is still 10,000 is cheap. But Hoarder House. I mean, we're talking about anything you can imagine. I mean, we we got papers, clothes, VCR tapes, food. It was eight jars, dump, eight dump trucks, right? nine to ten thirty-yard dumpsters. The biggest dumpsters we could get from the the, 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 the dumpster place. And this wasn't a huge house. It, I mean, it it was it was it had a downstairs yeah. basement, had a main level, and it had an upstairs. Okay, and. Nine to ten dumpsters, and that took us a week, a week with five guys to clear that stuff out. Dude. You were in a room for hours, and there's like nothing. There's like there's like nothing that was good. Rough. I mean, there was some we, stuff. This is where it gets like this. This first house was just a journey, man. Because th- th- that cleaning out the house, that lady, we had trouble getting her out of the house because she was attached because she had to keep everything. Um, and it was a bad situation. I mean, her husband had passed away a few, like you know, five, ten years ago, and yeah. she just really she couldn't throw anything away. She had to keep all of it. But we had a hard time getting her out of the house, and you know we pushed back closing like a month because she just would not get out of the house. She couldn't get her stuff out. She wouldn't. She she could, but she did not want to. But we had this contract, and I was there. So I showed up the day that I, we gave her an extra month, and I showed up the day that we're gonna start work. 
and we're starting throw all, throwing all that stuff in the dumpster, and she shows up, and she just starts going crazy. No, she starts going ballistic. Which, like the show, like the show hoarders. Yeah, dude, it was it. If we if I recorded that, man, that would be it. Was just crazy. It was just she was showing. She was going nuts. She was grabbing stuff from our hands. We should let, she was she was in the dumpster, no grabbing way. stuff out of the dumpster. No and i thought about calling like calling the cops cuz i mean we have it's, a yeah, we have this con- it's just my house we have yeah. this con- i gave her an extra month it was just it was some of the most stressful times cuz i were there for 2 3 days and she's on our back consistently you know and i it's a hard it's a hard decision to make cuz it's her you house you want to be a good person but it's but at the same time like dude i got I, i'm every time i let you lo- yeah. stick around like it's going to take long costing me money is costing yeah, me you exactly. know be wasting our time when we're here ready to go but Cut a long story short, I mean, we cleared, that took us a week, two weeks to clear out that entire house, and that was just... Okay, so you clear out this house, yeah. took you two weeks, yep. right? And then you have, from start to finish, right? There's a lot of things that we don't have to go into, it, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that came up from the city. Yep. There's a lot of things that, that just dragged this out, mm-hmm. where it took you, like, a now a flip maybe will take you three months. Three, four months, You yeah. know, but that this took a year and a half, took right? A year, took a year and a half. Yeah. Took a year yeah. and a half. Half that time, half those, half those five, six months was getting, since I was so young, getting, my, getting the name in my house, getting the house in my name was an issue with the city because it was on the demo list. A lot of hoops you had to jump through there. Stuff with the city, stuff with, you know, the bank and financial-wise. Um, it took like five, six months to get stuff figured out and that paperwork process and stuff through, which is a nightmare, especially, see, I think, most in part because I was so young. It would, they, they had a hard time just dealing with that, and I had yeah. to jump through certain hoops. So five, six months dealing with that, and the rest, you know, the other year was literally working on the house. And you were working on it roughly, basically by yourself, or did you have other people help you? I, no, yeah, I mean... 80 to 90 percent of it was by myself and you were in college and i was in in college college, right yeah and i'll mention this i did not pay myself anything from that first house i didn't take a dime from it until i sold it so that whole year and a half i'm not getting paid for this house nothing i'm getting paid zero zero dollars so i'm taking side jobs so what that means right let's back so the top there like if you like now Mm -hmm. if you were to buy a house yeah Right. Every time you'd, if you would spend five hours working that day yeah. in the house, you would pay yourself 15 bucks an hour or whatever it is. And then, so it's like your job and then you make money on the flip. Yeah. Right. Is that like, correct? Yeah. And now, now, honestly, I haven't done work now for a few, a, you know, a few months, a year, maybe in the summertime, I do some stuff that, cause I enjoy, I enjoy that type of work, yeah. you know? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, right now I get paid for, and I manage a lot of stuff. I know all the projects we have going on, so I get paid for managing it. But at the time, I was managing it. I was working with the finances. I was doing the work. I was doing everything, and I was I was getting paid zero dollars. Yeah, I was yeah. not taking anything. So I wanted to hold that payment off until the end, so I was done and finished. Then I could relax. But I wanted to keep that you know that treat or that prize at the end of the the finish line. But it was just that first one, man, was was something else. So yeah, and, and really like it sucked. Yeah, at the beginning. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, during that time. But when you look back, I think you like, dude. How much stuff did I dude. learn? Like, I learned so much stuff. I'm never gonna go yeah. through that again. You know, where and if so, if you're 18 mm-hmm. and you have this house that you're fixing up, and you've learned now, it's like, I I sold the house. I made a profit on it. Yep. We don't have to go into detail how much you made, but you made a profit. And you look back like. How many hours did I spend on this house mm-hmm. divided by how much I made? Yep. I mean, I'm probably making seven bucks an hour, maybe something like that. Dude, that that's exactly what I made. Really? After that first house, spending a whole year on the house and what I made off it, by by investment standards, it wasn't a very good investment. It was okay. It wasn't great. But after all those hundreds of thousands of hours I literally put in the house by myself, I made, I did the math, I did like seven bucks an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Which like- so, But when you sell out, you get this check. Yeah, it was nice. Know, like, I'm glad okay. I didn't take any money from yeah. it, but- Looking back, I mean, come on, I, I don't pay someone to, to dog sit my dogs for seven yeah. bucks an hour. I mean, I'd pay them more than that, you know, it's, so it's kind of like, ah, uh, but I'm glad I saved it to the end. You know, yeah. That was- yeah, and I mean, the biggest thing with that is, like, we've done jobs for landscaping and, and mowing where we look back and we're like, the only thing we benefited from that is learning, like, not what, like what <laughs> yeah. not to do. That was, like, yeah. We didn't make any money. No. We, 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 by the time we paid everybody, by the time right. we paid insurance and gas and everything, we made no money, but we learned so much. So now, how many houses have you flipped? Um, man, I was trying to think while you were saying that. I think, I think it's been closer to seven or eight. We have a few going on right now. So these past three, four years, I've gotten slowly, you know, we, after that first one, I got another one, and then we got two at a time, then another two or three at a time. So I think, I think it's been closer to seven or eight. 
And so now, exactly. now you're you're not really doing the roof. You're really not doing the drywall. You're not painting. You're not doing the the flooring. You're not no. doing any of that. You have other people doing it. And and you've learned so much that you know what to yeah, like you, the like, investment. Like you said, man. That without that first house, that first house was essential. Like I, I that like you said, it stunk. The first like the first like the little giddy optimism you have at first, like oh this is great. This is my own thing. But a few months in, like, man, this is the worst, you know? But looking back, you know, that that was that was tough. That was just, being in there, it was just, man, I need more money. It's taking a lot more time. You know, I'm an 18-year-old kid. Like, I've got to figure stuff out, you know? But looking back like that, that still helps me today, you know, learning stuff from from that first one. Um, but, yeah, that first one was definitely was definitely yeah. essential. I think I forgot your question. Did you ask me a question? No, no, no. So the question, yeah. I guess the question I have now is, during that time, mm-hmm. right? Because there's people like who have a lawn care business that are watching this or whatever, yeah. and they're they're like second, third year, fourth year of business, and and it sucks right mm-hmm. now. Like it's not like how it is for me, where it's everything is going smoothly. Like it's it's not it's not fun. They they seem like they don't make as much money. They might make eight bucks an hour if they yeah. did the math. Mm-hmm. Like if they after they get done mowing, they have to come in, they have to put the mowers away, they got to do the office work. Like th- they're breaking it down. Man, man, making like nine bucks an hour. So during that time, was there ever a time where you're like, I don't want to do real estate dude, ever again? I that was dude. That was me. I was making literally at the time. I didn't know how much I was making, but in that house. I was doing everything. I was doing the paperwork. I was doing the finances. I, I had to keep track of what I was spending and what I was spending it on and making sure I was getting the right stuff, the material, and making sure I was paying off, you know, whoever was lending me money. And it was just, it was a ton. And I, and I had college and I was figuring stuff out as, as this 18 year old kid. Um, but I lost track of your question again. No, like, did you ever quit? Did you oh, ever think about quitting? I remember standing in the living room of that house and all the walls were gone. <laughs> The walls were gone. They were just wood. They were just wood studs, and that was not part of my plan going into the going into the house. You weren't planning on taking. I wasn't planning on doing that. And so I remember staying there in the house. It was winter. It was December. It was freezing. It was cold. And like I had gotten there, I turned. I had been gone for a while, so I turned the heat down a little bit. But it was just. It was cold outside. It was cold inside because there was no. There was no insulation in the house. It was a wood frame. And I just remember laughing. Like I was. I was sitting there by myself. In the cold December, just laughing because I remember thinking, like, man, you know what? I wanted, you know, my 18 year old self, whatever, you know, I wanted to bet on myself. I thought that was gonna be awesome, but I bet on myself, and I'm sitting in this house with no insulation, no walls, and I'm just laughing in the middle of December by myself, just in the house, just laughing, thinking about this, like, you know what? It was my choice. I wanted to bet on myself, and now here I am. Now what am I gonna do? Yeah. Am I going to? You know, go to my go go to my dad and cry about it, or go to someone else and ask for them for them to you know them to take care of it. I couldn't, man. I bet on myself. I, now I'm sitting there like, man, am I gonna? I mean, quitting was my option. I couldn't. Yeah. I, I couldn't quit. I, w- I had to pay people back. I had to finish the stuff. But I'm like, man, I wanted to bet on myself, and now here I am. And now let's see if it was worth it. <laughs> let's see if it, let's see if it's gonna come through. Let's see if I'm um, you know, if that was a smart decision or not. You know, and. At the time, it wasn't, but looking back, like, you know, I'm glad I did, but like I said, but if you're talking about, thinking about quitting, yeah, I mean, I thought, I thought for sure, man, this is the worst. If I had to change it, I might have, I might have changed it, but it was just, it was rough. When you get done with that yard, okay, not yard, when you get done with that flip, yeah. so in the middle of it, you you can't quit. No, you can't. It's too late. But after, when you Mm -hmm. get completely done, was there a time where you're like, I'm going to take a break from this for like a couple months and like get my head and like maybe, because I know you went to... I know you went to a conference. I knew you went to Harper's <laughs> yeah, conference. Yeah. And maybe, I don't know if that was dirt right after or during. And yeah, you like, it was, during, was, there yeah. a time, was there a time where it's like, let me take a break and let me make sure I want to do this long term. <laughs> because you're doing it long term now. Yeah. And I'm, th- I'm, to be honest, James, like I'm thinking, I'm thinking that the whole time I'm doing the first house. Like, do I want to do this again? Do I want to, because I'm doing this right now anyway. But like, I'm thinking as I'm working on the first house that I'm thinking, do I want to do this again? You know, I'm thinking as I'm doing the first one, once I get close to finishing that first one, you know, this might not be for people listening or, but like my, my personality, my mentality is get done, you know, is keep moving, just get, keep stuff rolling, get, get stuff done. And that, that day I closed on that first one, the day I closed, I bought a second one. (laughs) (laughs) I don't, dude, I I, I don't know what I was thinking, but, and that, you know, it could it could have worked out. You're probably horrible thinking, for me. Yeah, you're probably thinking, 
it can't be it can't, it can't, it can't get much worse it can't, it can't get worse than what just happened which is which is you're right that's what i was thinking but the day i closed on the day the day i closed and got that money in my account i bought a second one <laughs> <laughs> that, and that kind of that's just kind of like my personality like all right what, that mistake's done i'm gonna do better the second one let's let's go right away like, let's, let's get it done right away uh, but that looking back i'm not sure if that was too smart but it worked out right for me. Yeah, and I, I think I like I like to you know make the analogy because there is a lot of people who like have followed this podcast because of, of TikTok, right? And they yeah. have a lawn care company, or they don't have a lawn care company. They have another painting business. And last twenty twenty one was good for me, mm-hmm. but twenty twenty one not might not have been good for them. Like they're thinking this spring, dude, do I really want to keep these twenty five yards? Do I want to yeah. just sell them and get rid of it, right? And and where they have to come to the decision of, yeah, I'm going to just quit it. And you're not a quitter if you stop a business that's not growing. Yeah, yeah. But do I do I really want to continue this long term? And where with we where I was four years ago or three years ago when I took over this business and I knew like the next three years, like the last three years for me, were, 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 were fun and were good and was profitable. But it wasn't as profitable if I would have just not took it over. If I would have just – I made more money not taking it over the company. Mm-hmm. So – you had to come to a point where there was times that first year where I took over the second year. I'm like, dude, is this worth it? Like, yeah. is this worth it? And for you, dude, you, 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 it was terrible. But you're like, as soon as, I, dude, I didn't know that story. I didn't know you as soon as you closed, <laughs> boom, <laughs> the next day, you just bought a new one. Yeah, man. And and the thing is, dude, you're gonna, I made, I mean, I, I made, looking back, I made a mistake, you know, but I, I could either live in that mistake for the next few months and like, do I want to do it, go back and forth and live in it and make it worse? Or I'm like, you know what? Forget it. Now let's not make, let's, yeah. let's make that mistake. Make this one the best, yeah. you know, like, you know, so I kind of like, you're I just get, three months behind. If you would have waited, yeah, month, like, uh, yeah. close on it, I got to wait through it. You'd be three months pat, behind. Yeah. And that goes, for, that goes for, that goes for any mistake you make, whether it's business or not, you know, you can, you know, I just thought you can dwell on it and kind of, you know, but stick with your decision. You made it first, you know, cause you, I, I believe that's what I wanted to do. I made a mistake. So it's kind of testing my strengths. It's kind of, life's kind of testing me to see if I want to do this or not. But I just continued. I I, I continue just to jump right into yeah. it. Yeah, you know, and that you know, and that that's just what I just what I and, and it, that just reminds me of literally shoveling snow at Lake Gilbert, yeah. bro. <laughs> because at the time, I can't just I can't just stop shoveling these people's driveways. Yeah, like they have to get done, no matter if the plow broke or you whatever. Sign the, the contract. You sign whatever. Yeah, I got to yeah. do it. But moving forward, mm-hmm. I don't want this to ever That's happen again. Point. So yeah. how do I fix it and how do I learn from it? Mm-hmm. All right. So basically one of the last questions, like what would you, okay, someone who, because so, me, yeah, I'm 31 years old. My goal, the reason why I have the lawn business to take the profits eventually and use it to get into real estate, use it to be set up long term where there's a, there's a um, passive income mm-hmm. assets coming in. So someone who's 18, 19, <clears throat> 20, 21, who wants to get into real estate, you learned how to do it. Is there any podcast? Is there any books? Is there any people that you listen to? Or or how would someone who's 19 or 20 get into it? And would you recommend it, getting into it 19, 20? Yeah. So I'll go back to what we said at first. It's not about necessarily what you know, but who you know. As 18, I knew, no, I knew nothing. Zero. I knew nothing. I did, I did. I helped my brother. He had a few rentals. I helped him do work on it. But as far as the real estate part, I knew nothing. You know. So it, it really was about, and my dad helped me out. You know, that was helpful that we lived in the same house. But now there is ten like man, five to ten people I could go to that can help me. That it's about who I know, that whether it's money, whether it's advice, whether it's finding a property. And it's it's really cause still to this day, compared to these guys, I still know nothing compared to what they've done it for twenty, thirty years. You know, why why try to do it all on your own when you're just starting out? That's just not very smart. What what whether it's long care or any business you try to start. So I think it's really is about you know, if you're wanting to start, you know, start talking about it, start mentioning it and people will come to you or you'll find people and you have to take, you have to find, maybe find some people that, that have similar interests or that want a good investment and you can be that good investment for them. You know, I think that, that was really, for me, st- looking back for me, starting off, it really was about who I knew and that it's not so much as, as what I knew, but also that, you know, people, you know, I, I wasn't all that in a bag of chips. I wasn't much. But I mean, I, I, I think I was kind of, as a, as a hard, I was going to get it. I was going to get it done. I was going to work hard and get it done until, mm-hmm. and that was stuff that my dad had taught me and uh, that I was taught before. Um, but I think really, if you're wanting to start, if you're looking to start, um, who you know, and also just being a good investment 
and we're blessed, right? I mean, dude, we go yeah. to a church that, I mean, you think about the real estate people in our church. Yeah. I mean, dude, there's probably 10 people just yeah. in our church yeah. off the top of my head. And, and there's people that, you know, that maybe either used to go to our church or not in our church anymore mm-hmm. who we know too. Yeah. Where there's so many people. and But the, I go back to, and I talk to people all the time, right? I talk the last five podcasts that I've had where long care guys have been on it. They've all taken like YouTube and people on YouTube mm-hmm. or people on podcasts. They've taken the information though, like books. They've taken that and they've actually like used it. Like yeah. there's there's so much information Dude. out there, but so many people don't use it. And like you could have been stubborn and like, no, nah, I'm gonna try to figure it out myself. Yeah. Well, yeah, you you maybe you could have done it, but why? Why do that? Because there's I think like Alfred, right? Yeah. Alfred, I think he almost gets more joy of like seeing like you mm-hmm. succeed because he like had a pro- a part of it right. than him actually going and buying a new apartment complex yeah. where he just bought like yeah. a huge apartment complex. Like yeah. he enjoys like, dude, if I could, if I'm 50 and this guy is doing, he has apartment complex. Like that's, they want to help, yeah. right? I want to help somebody who's, who has 15 lawns to get to mm-hmm. 40. Like they want to help. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's huge. It is, it is about who you know and it's about, but it's about using that, that knowledge um, of it. Anything, anything that you would say about real estate, like the last thing where you say, this is something that I specifically learned. Like, because we, we could spend five hours on practical stuff. Yeah. Like, but is there anything off the top of your head that said, man, this this really helped me? For real estate? Real estate. For, yeah, real estate. You, def- you definitely make, you definitely, the, w- the where you make money is when you buy. You know, you, you have to buy, if you buy, a house, if you buy a house too high, no matter how frugal you are with fixing it up or, you know, Sell, jack up the price when you when you try to sell it. I mean, the, you make money when you buy the house. Yeah, you know, I bought that house for ten grand. You know, I ended up selling it for a lot more than that. But if I would have bought it, you know, you know at four Just where I, where I you could have, three, yeah. you know, like that. That's where. And I talked him down from twenty to seventeen down to ten. If I would have bought at twenty, it would have been much worse. You know, so you definitely make the money when you buy when you buy the house. Um, that's definitely when you make your money when you buy the house, and obviously. This, this, I mean, I think anybody knows this about real estate, but the location obviously is important. Location, location, location. <laughs> Where you buy the house is important. So you, you, you definitely, you make the money when you buy your house at the start. If you buy it a good price, a good deal, it's cheap. That, that's when, that's when you're making money. Yeah, and when you're talking about that, it, it's, it's like in my business, the way you make money in lawn care is by pricing the job right. Mm-hmm. If you don't price it right, it doesn't matter how fast you mow the yeah. yard. You're, you're not going to make any money. You have to be dense. You can't be driving 10 minutes away. You can't be driving 10 minutes, mow this yard, drive 10 minutes. You're paying guys to drive for half the day. Yeah. And then, right, th- those those two simple things are, are, are crazy. And then the equipment you have, right? If you have a push mower that doesn't work, mm-hmm. you're not going to make very much yeah, money. So those right. simple things. But I've heard that with real estate before. Snowplow doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Snowplow breaks, breaks down. down. <laughs> have do. It doesn't matter how fast you can shovel. But, like, with you, I've heard that before. Like, some people think... Man, real estate is all about these simple tricks, like like um like crazy tricks that are secret. Mm-hmm. No, you you have to buy a house where if and it's harder right now probably yeah, to no, buy yeah. a house that's that's but a good it buy. It goes back to who you know. If you yeah. know the right people, they're gonna find you the right stuff yeah. that you know they're looking for. Yeah, like that guy I said before, Alfred, like yeah. one of our friends and one of the people in our church, he I mean he gets people he gets probably houses sent to him all the time. Right. Hey, yeah. I oh, buy yeah. this house. Yeah. But and he he probably it's probably not a great deal for him, but for someone like you or for someone like the who doesn't have to do 40 yeah he's looking for, he it, it works out for you exactly. so making the money on you buy is i've heard that before mm-hmm. but I, I think that's that's the core of it that's like one of the principles you cannot pay too much for it yeah i'm just imagine if you would have bought it for three that's seven thousand dollars right yeah yeah hey look i mean i have a list of people that i want on the show you were on you were one of them i mean we've known each other for a long time mm-hmm. I have a you got a book here. I asked them to bring a book. We have we we recognize a book of week. Last week we talked about the new gold standard. I told you one of the guys I want to have on the show, Dave Reddick, who has a yacht cleaning business. I, we yeah, talked about that. In Christmas. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, a huge lot, cool. yacht yacht cleaning business, boat cleaning business, t- full full you know full uh, service. But he recommended this this book, how to take care of your customers. And not everybody needs this book. I'm sure in real estate you don't like. It's a good book to read, yeah. right? But I mean, you know, as in you're not dealing with customers every day like, mm-hmm. you know, some people are. But we talked about the new gold standard and then just talk about the book that you brought. Yeah, this this is I remember we talking about earlier if there's a podcast somebody that helped me out. Bigger Pockets is is a podcast that um I just knew here and there, um not as much as I should to be honest with you, but they're I mean, Brandon Turner is 
is run, runs that, um, and they're they're great. I mean, they I, I I subscribe to their text messages, and they they send me texts, you know, every, every week about certain stuff. It, it's not just real estate; it's about setting goals, it's about business, it's about stuff that that helps you. Some of it is, but some of it is more that, like you said, that gold standard. It's something that'll help you in your business, no matter what it is. It's just good things to to live by. This is on this is on there. Um, it's it's a strengths finder 2.0. So I don't know if you want to show that or whatnot, but that. I just got by that Don, by Don Clifton, yeah. right? And by it's Don twenty Clifton. bucks on Amazon. Um, but the thing that is, James, I'm not like a very. I know you like to read, I, and you like to read. I know my brother, some people I know around me like to read a lot more than I do. I'm not a huge reader. I, I'll read. I'll read a little bit, to be honest. But I'm not a huge reader. I, I'm. I like to be more. I'm. Me personally, I'm more of a visual learner, or you know, learn from experiences, which not is not the best way to learn. <laughs> But more of a vision, I need something to help me learn, not just sit and read, which I do sometimes, but something that'll help me. And in, in this book, there's there's a test. There's a there's a thing in the back that has you take a test online. And it what it does, it, it just identifies your strengths. And me and three people took it like that I work with in my, in my business. Three people took it. We all took it and we kind of sat down together and talked about it. It's a test that takes you about a half hour, but it helps you just discover what you're good at. Yeah. What are your strengths? Yeah. And what are the people that you work with? What is their strengths? And it helps you work together and understand, you know, what you're trying to get at. Like, why am I in real estate? Uh, because, you know, these five, it helps me list my strengths. And my first strengths is, is I'll just give you an example. It's belief. And I, I, I love, you know, I have a core, I have a core belief in what I'm doing yeah. and I want to help my family. I want to help build that. So real estate helps me, you know, that's one of my strengths is that belief in real estate helps me fulfill that strength that I, that I have. It just, it just helps, helps you, helps the person that you're working with. And it's I think that, it helps a company too, right? Yeah, like it helps. all the leaders of the company. Well, your strength is this, like, I didn't know that. Right. Mm-hmm. So you could, you could, you could actually do a better job of talking exactly. to customers than yeah. me yeah. because my strength is not, or you're, you're better at, at leading people to get a, a job done. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's huge. Cause I, I think you mentioned that book or maybe your brother mentioned that book and, and that's you. So your, your, your biggest strength is belief. Is yeah, there a why, second one? Why I do what I do. Come belief. Um, man, one, one of them was, um, you know, competitive, you know, which is, you know, but it, it also, it helps you identify your strengths but also how to and also your part your people you work with identify their strengths but also how to deal with yeah. people that if your strength was competitiveness that's number one it helps me deal with people that or mm. help people that have that strength yeah. but people that also they, they know my strength they help they can adapt their what they send me my way or what problems come my way they can help me adapt and you know it just helps it just helps know who you're working with yeah and kind of because Cause that recently, like I said, I've had this book for like two weeks and going over it, reading it, um, going over it with people that I work with has honestly, man, we've, there's been a two goals already that right away from this book that have popped up into my head that we're going to pursue yeah. because of this is my strength. So let's go, let's pursue this in this way. And that, I feel like that really helped me. Like, it's not a real estate book. It's not a lawn care book. It's a, it's a personal book that can help you with others. Yeah. And, yeah. That can and get that's the thing going, like, right. You know? Like. I, I don't think I've ever read read a book on lawn care. Yeah. There isn't there's not very many. Right, right. Yeah. Maybe I should write one. But I don't <laughs> I don't think I don't think there you don't need to. Like there's I mean there's real estate books out there. Yeah. But yeah, dro- drop a comment if you think James should write a lawn care book. I'd be all about that. I, I would Dude. read it. I would take I'll take it. No, I that would take too much time, man. <laughs> I was talking to someone, I think it was Freddie. Freddie Deanna. He's like, yeah. yeah, I wrote a book. I was like, I would never read it. <laughs> but I mean, so yeah, I I, I like I like books. I like reading it. And some people, they're going to be shoveling snow this winter Mm -hmm. and they're going to listen to music for eight hours while they're shoveling snow. Like why? Mm -hmm. Like you can listen to music. I listen to music a couple hours a day, but like my, I listen to podcasts. I listen to books. You know, I just got done with a book about a dollar general, how dollar general started. Mm -hmm. And it's, it was a family old business. So it's kind of recommend, recognize it with me. And, and books have changed my life of, you know, 80, 90 in the last couple of years and and most of them are listening to it because mm-hmm. i'm sitting on a mower so yeah man, and if I, yeah so I, go, go, go. To, to jump in there and to be honest james i listen to audible probably more than i would sit down and read a book yeah. but if if you're like me in any way where reading is not your really forte which is not mine this book is literally it's it's short it has sections that you can just pick out and read and then be done with it for a bit but that it's it's more of a 
active learning where you're taking yeah. a test, you're looking yeah. at your book, you're kind of, it's ha- kind of helping you along instead of sitting there and just reading what yeah. some people have a hard time with, which which I don't enjoy as much. And but if it's you're watching on YouTube, learning. you can see like this book, New Gold Standard, is a lot thicker than the other yeah. one and the, the thing. So it goes quick. Hey, I appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, I, man, that was good. If was you good, want thanks. to... If you want to get on the show, I, I have a call with a lawn care guy next week, and you know he's got 50, 60 lawns. He's growing. If you want to get on the show, message me on Instagram. I know there's a bunch of people in- message me. I try to filter them through, try to find somebody. You know, almost go me- eeny, meeny, miny, mo. because I know everybody will help having a conversation. If you want to message me on Instagram or message the show, the good old show at gmail.com. Look, we, we know that this podcast, you know, it can help. But if it helped you, it's going to help someone else, right? It's going to help someone else. So share it. Um, subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on um, um, Spotify. I'm trying to get on Apple Podcasts, but they're taking forever um, to let me get on there. So thanks for coming on, Joe. Um, yeah, thanks you guys for have me, a good man. day. You guys have a good New Year's. Have a safe New Year's. And let's pray the Packers win this weekend. Yeah, let's go Bears. Have a good one. <laughs>